Hi everybody, Mature Simmer here. So welcome back to Neofly as I continue to work with Mature Simmer Air and just trying to keep my little company moving forward here. So you can see I have got a total capability of 357 pounds with the fuel we have and it's going to be really difficult uh, not to go ahead and take some things back to this airport. So we may be flying in a very short area here, but we're going to go up here to North Canton and let's see if I take this passenger and then let's see which car can I do the 175? No, because that would be too much, but I can do this. So I can take the smaller cargo but I'll take the more expensive passenger. So one passenger to Akron Canton Regional. So we can take that job. Hello, pilot. Your passengers are waiting for you. Let me know when we can send them. All right, and then... Captain, we have opened the gates for boarding. The passengers are on their way. And then we're going to take mechanical parts. And so there we go. We've got both of those together. We need 501 so just about whoops right there that'll work the cargo is waiting for you at the usual location the ground crew are loading the cargo stand by all right we'll go a little heavier i guess and now i'll go ahead and start my engine because i don't want things to be later and then uh, unable to start because that can be a problem All right, and then I'm going up here. You can start your engine now. Looks good from where I'm sitting. Okay. Taxi to the runway and take off. So it doesn't look like like we have any problems. So we're gonna go ahead and get airborne, and then get ourselves over. I'm just trying to find on my VFR chart where the airport is, so that I know where I'm going. Hmm. Well, I suppose... I don't know. We'll figure it out. It's more exciting that way, right? Makes it a little more VFR-like. Alright. So here we go. Oops. i got to get my flaps up to a little, little less drastic. Otherwise, I think we get too much lift, and we're not on that short of an airfield. All right, so we should be able to take off. There we go. Pilot from dispatch, fly safe. All right, so we're going to head up here. Again, trying to get my... my charts set so that I can see where I'm going to some degree. All right, so that should be about right, I think. That'll get me in that direction. Now we've got about 20 nautical miles to go. All right, I'm going to slow down a bit now that we've gotten up here. Get the flaps fully up. That will allow me to speed up, and then we're going to try to trim ourselves and get ourselves at the point where we're not not climbing, not doing much, because we, we don't want to get really high here. So there's just not really a reason to do that. So let's see if, if that gets us going at about 80. And the challenge is, again, trying to find the airport. Now, I may end up uh, typing things in on the, on the map. I'm going to head up more this way. I'm coming down too far south. I don't think that's where we want to go.
All right, so amazingly, I am almost right on the right heading, so I did get it in. Um, it's 23 nautical miles. So let's see, we're climbing through 2,000 feet. We don't need to go there. We're going to go over a good portion of Canton um, when we're headed this way. So let me see. Just trying to see if we're trimmed out or not. We appear to keep rising, which is obviously not what we want to be doing. Now if I, whoops, I don't want to go up too much. Let's see, if I get myself basically level, that's too high, right about there. What's happening? We're sinking, so now I need to go up a bit. So I can't say I won't be happier uh, with a plane that requires less manual flying. Because, yeah, setting trim and all that, um, I mean, it's good to know how to do it. And it's good practice if you're just, if you're new to flight sim. I mean, that's one of the nice things with starting out with planes like this in NeoFly. But if you're not new to flight sim, like... Uh, <laughs> you miss it. <laughs> you know, like, this could be way easier. I could just get up here and just, you know, take off and land, and that's all I need to do. But, uh, you know, that's not always the case, so... All right, we're, we've got to... Be, we're pretty close here, so I think we're good. Because what it will tend to do to some degree is kind of go up and down a little bit. But the goal is, you know, that it it be kind of straight and level. Now, I don't know, maybe I still have it a little bit too low. So I went up a couple clicks. We'll see what that starts to do. Because now it seems to be rising. All right, we'll go down a click. We'll see if that helps, but, you know, obviously if, if we can't quite level out, then we can't quite level out. I mean, it, but the hope is that, you know, and, and some of it is obviously there's air currents and, and things like that, but, all right, I'm actually probably on a good, good line here because the vector that I have is, you know, it would take me kind of straight to the center of the runways at the airport, and obviously I need to be able to come in and approach and land. So, this will work. The nice thing here is at least we're not looking for a grass field airport. <laughs> but the other nice thing is we're getting two, two jobs at once, so we're going to get a good payday of you know, almost $5,000 or something for this flight. So all of that keeps helping us because we are able to take out a tiny loan, $50,000, if we want to go that route at some point. And, you know, at this point, now that we're going to be over 30000 like we're, we're kind of getting to the point where we're, you know, at 80000 or so, that might work because there's always that security deposit and stuff that you need for aircraft. Because if I can even step up to a Cessna 172 Skyhawk, you know, that'll give me the opportunity to have the G1000 uh, IFR package and and do those type of things which would open you know and give me the autopilot and so forth so it would be easier to fly a little bit longer and it'd obviously then be less of trying to figure out on a separate screen what's happening like you we'd have the navigation in the plane and so forth so everything would be in pretty good shape basically the airport's going to be like up in that direction there we may not be able to see it yet you know maybe over there but 
We're going over Mapleton right now. So if we take a look out of the plane, I don't know if that's the whole town. You know, but it's just a little dot on the map. Whoops. We just keep turning, which we don't want to be doing. But we've probably got another five or six miles till we start hitting Canton proper or the suburbs. On VFR maps, you're going to have kind of yellow that shows more highly populated areas. Like Mapleton doesn't have that at all where we were. But, you know, that's the thing with the Cessna, you know, 23 nautical miles. I mean, 23 miles isn't that far, but we're only going, you know, 80. We could go a little faster maybe, but it's not going to save us that much more time. Plus, we have less panic if we, uh, if we don't do that. Obviously, we've been climbing more than we've been descending because we're at 2,500 feet. I wasn't really even paying attention, but the trim is obviously more more up than down, so we'll see if we can switch that a bit, because otherwise we're going to have a long way to come down from, and we're going to be dive-bombing the airport, which I'd probably prefer not to be doing. So... But at this point, I'm probably on a course that's a little too far. I'm going to end up being like 15 miles from the airport. So we're going to head up more in this direction, kind of right between 300 and 330. So like right around 315. You know, maybe air closer to 320 or whatever. And then we'll we'll get there. So, Akron Canton is Class C airspace. We're not quite there yet, so if we were working with air traffic control and things like that, we'd shortly be coming in and uh, calling in to their, to the tower and so forth. So, But yeah, I wish I could make these more entertaining. I mean, maybe they're entertaining enough. Just, you know, I mean, this is kind of what flying a, a little plane like this is like. You're just up in the air and, you know, it's still faster than you could probably get there via the roads. Because first off, you know, there's no real uh, local roads you're going to be going 80 on. But we're also obviously going relatively directly where we need to go. Or with roadways, we'd have to kind of meander around. All right, we are clearly climbing, so I am going to trim this down a lot more. See if we can get that all changed up. All right, so we're kind of on the outskirts of... I was thinking I would move it there, but as you can see, we've got some Industrial parks, definitely more neighborhoods and things like that. But now, you know, we're passing over. And we really, in essence, have to kind of go across to the other side. The airport's on the north side of town. Uh, there's going to be a highway, so it's probably this one here. So I believe this turn uh, is, is what I know. And then the airport's on that side of the highway. So it gives you a little bit of a bearing of, of where we're headed. But that's the thing. If I, if I was to go uh, south of this, so kind of cross by here, I would easily be 10 miles from the airport when I was trying to come in on the, the vector. And basically there's a, it looks like a runway 36 or 18 type of heading very close to it. I'm not not pulling up the plan or anything because, again, we're not flying IFR where we're filing a flight plan or anything like that. So, yeah, I trim down a bit more again, so that should get us maybe slowly going down. But if I kind of go through and keep staying on this heading, 
you know, I'll, I'll be like five miles out or so, it's five, six miles, and that should be pretty easy to line up then with the runway and and get going from there. So we're going to be passing another uh, main roadway that should be coming off. Yeah, I think that's it there. And so we'll be going across that. Doesn't on the VFR charts give me any specific information as to what the roadways are. I would kind of need the surface the surface things for that, the surface maps, surface things. I'm using technical words here. <laughs> but yeah, we're well into class C airspace by now, by the way. We're getting close to kind of what is marked as class C and class D ground, which I assume means we're kind of in control of the tower then. So I'm thinking that's the airport there. Because we've got a runway well, I'm not entirely sure. I don't think we have a different airport. But I am second guessing myself a little bit. But yeah, you can see there's definitely runway lights. It just seems a lot closer than five miles. All right, so I'm going to put my flaps out. That'll start slowing me down. But we want to keep an eye on where we want to go here. But yes, that is definitely the airport as I'm watching things kind of line up. So we're also going to back off here. More flap to again slow us down and um, give us some lift so that we can fly at a slower speed here. But we're still waiting, like the highway is there, so there it's coming around. And then there is the runway, there's the airport. So 2300 feet. Kinda gonna wanna head over a little bit more get over there. I want to watch my airspeed, so I got to be careful. All right, 2,000. All right, that's full flaps. At this point, we're going to start lining up. So there it is. I'm gonna fly more on an intercept yet if we keep turning on to the heading of 360 we're going to be not not lined up yet so all right we may have to probably throttle up a bit cuz again we've got a lot of flaps so we're going to have a lot of resistance and we don't want to go down obviously too fast at this point we might be a little lower than we want to be because I would still say we're we're five miles out here seems unlikely that that that's that far but if I really look at the chart so over there is North Canton um, people probably know Canton more than anything else if you're not from the area as the home to the uh, National Football Hall of Fame. So it is located in Canton, Ohio. So if you were flying in, say, for an event, you know, maybe induction weekend or something, this would likely be the airport you'd be coming into. Alright, I am really going slow here. I'm not liking that. I almost feel like the flaps are... what I didn't check was the wind. I'm wondering if I'm flying into the wind. The fact that I can only go 60 and I'm nearly at full throttle seems a little strange. Alright, I think I'm too far over. 
it just doesn't visually look good. I mean, again, this airport can take much bigger planes, so this should be a huge runway. Now we're about two miles out. So we might have a crosswind too, because I am having a hard time moving over this way, I'll tell you that, and staying over there. It's almost like if I try to line up straight on the runway, it blows me over too far. All right, we're going to back off on the throttle a bit, because now we can slow down, and we should be able to coast our way in. Let me put my landing monitor on so that I know how fast we're coming down. All right, now that we're over the runway, we're going to fully pull back the throttle, and we're just going to let it come down. You greased that landing. There we Ace. go. She took a long time to call me Ace. Taxi to parking and shut down your engine. All right. Well, there's nothing really there. I think I when we came in here before, we kind of went over this way. That's really obviously where the main terminal is. I was beginning to wonder if I was turning onto the other runway, but I don't think so. Just a really big taxiway. All right. So. I think we're going to head over where we got that other plane set over there. That would be a good location because we certainly don't need to go to the terminal, but the GA location here would be good. So I am running um, FSLTL right now. Um, I don't know that in theory I should have a spot here. There's technically no taxi lines, so... Me being a non-aviator and all, I don't totally know the protocol. I mean, I, I'd say I can fit in here, I just don't know that I should. But anyway, let me put my flaps up. But... Yeah, for traffic injection, I don't have the real traffic anymore. So, like, the, the planes at the terminal are put in, you know, and if you've got some over there, you know, it's actually doing, I'd say, a pretty good job. Whoops, 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 whoops. We're going to put on our brakes. I do not want to take off here, so. All right. I'm going to pull that back, and we are now going to shut down. Okay, pilot. The guests are leaving the aircraft now. All right. So, one passenger is all we have room for. We have the cargo bay back there, too. So, you know, in theory, they're leaving from those locations. But if I go over here, we should shortly see unlo onboarding passengers unloading cargo. We've got a little higher airport fee than where we left. But basically, we flew this way. Pilot, stand by. The cargo is being removed. So they're sliding out the mechanical parts is what we were moving. So there you go, 135 pounds of mechanical parts. But we should be over 30,000, and we're going to go from let's see, 285 experience to uh, something. I would assume 300 at least, but we'll see what we ultimately get. Let's get out of here. All right, so there we go. So uh, 295. So we just got five because we had we had gotten awarded the other things like 40 for the flight and all that, and then we got the aircraft stress. But if I go to my log again. You know, I'm definitely getting better at making sure I 
I get both the comfort, which is a good landing and don't pitch too much. Uh, don't do a stall or overspeed and that we've got the landing light beacon and taxi and all that speed in good shape. But another thing in the books, almost uh, well, we're up at $33,000. We'll see what's up for us next time. If you've enjoyed this but haven't dropped a like, please consider that. If you're not a subscriber yet, please consider that. And I will see you next time.